Now back to McGraw in the morning on the big 550 KTRS. This hour is presented by Affordable Kitchens and Baths. Visit them today at affordablekitchensandbaths.net. David Stokes from the Show Me Institute every Monday, and we got lots to get to. A little programming note. Not only are we going to talk some serious news here, but uh, you should know, David Stokes, that coming up at 9 o'clock, Desiree from The Bachelor, who was voted off last week, she's joining us at the top of the hour. Live in studio? Not live in studio. Oh. Not that good. <laughs> but on the phone, it is going to be good enough. That's still pretty cool. Still pretty good. So we'll, we'll get the, the lowdown on her tatted brother who was calling out Sean. So that's coming up at 10. Right now, though, a couple things in the news. David Stokes, one in which you've been following uh, very closely, and this is this Ellisville uh, Walmart situation. And um, a I guess a related, unrelated story is that the – City Council, the alderman in Ellisville, now want to impeach the mayor <laughs> of Ellisville. It's it's really getting more insane with each passing week, and this is this is hard to fathom. Apparently, the mayor made a mistake at a city council meeting a, f- a few months back, where some resident was in his face screaming at him, and he had the audacity to ask the policeman who was, like, standing right there to intervene before this woman punched him or something. Well, of course, that violates the city charter because the mayor has to go through the city manager before he contacts any employees, even if apparently a confrontation is occurring and there's a police officer right next to you. So they voted 5-2 to two to impeach the mayor. Well, they had a council. They had a special council meeting a week ago to investigate some of these charges, and they at that meeting they declined to press forward. Then, and then a few days later, they surprised everybody by voting to go forward with an impeachment, presumably on that and potentially other charges. But, which but, we'll wait to see what those other ones will be. But they voted five to two to impeach him. However, they haven't released the reason as to why they want to Im- impeach him. Right. It's. I mean, you could you could look long and hard before you find a worse example of of, lo- of horrible local government than Ellisville over the past year. Right. I mean, this is just reprehensible that this one man who had the audacity to fight a tiff and then further had the audacity to not be in the core clique of Ellisville City Council members, right? Which is not a clique I'd like to be a member <laughs> of myself, right? So now they're just whatever they can do to destroy Mayor Paul, they're they're going. To do, they've tried to destroy his reputation. They won their battle. It's they they've won, they got the tiff, but they they're not going to be content until they destroy him. It's like that Saturday Night Live skit of a few years ago where the election's over and the winning candidate still ran his negative ads against the loser <laughs> <laughs> for like a month for like a month on because he just wanted to crush him. The there's a there's a uh, election coming up in Ellisville in April, correct? There is, and there's a number of seats on the city council up. And there's a lot of anti-TIF people running, and the the rule, the rule, general idea is that the anti-TIF crowd is, is going to win the day and vote in many of these people who are against the TIF and vote out the people who voted for the TIF. I think there's an excellent chance that will happen. I certainly hope that happens, just, right. as, a, just as a fan of good <laughs> government in general. Right. I hope that that happens. I think it will, and that's one of the reasons they're rushing through this impeachment now because they've only got a, a few more weeks here to do it. So you have a local municipality wanting to impeach a mayor. They have yet to tell the public why, and yet they voted 5-2 to two to impeach the guy. What's the next step? Is he out? If 5-2 to two vote, are that's enough votes to sort of get him out? I think so. I mean, I, I think that that is it. Luckily, there will certainly be a lawsuit, and because they apparently have so little grounds for this, now maybe they've got something big that they're not releasing. I right. doubt it. I doubt it immensely. Right. Because they appear to have so little grounds, I think there'll be an excellent chance that this won't stand up in court. If they had a reason, and a really good reason, they probably would have mentioned it at some point. Right. I mean, they're just making themselves look worse. Worse. Like, if... Which is an accomplishment, because they looked pretty bad beforehand. Uh, it's outrageous. And, and what's worse in all of this is they think they can do it, and no one will ask questions. I mean, that's the the height of hypocrisy, is we're going to do whatever we want, and uh, don't ask us any questions. We're, we're not going to tell you. I mean, they're acting like kings. They are acting like kings, and, and too often in local government, if you've got a group of citizen opponents— fighting you, 
your local government just tries to wait them out. Right. They, well, they can, that group of activists can't stay together for months on on end. They'll 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 tire of this. They'll go away. Right. And I think that's what they're trying to do here. But the people in Ellisville are so riled up. I I hope it doesn't succeed. I hope that people keep fighting back. And, we'll, uh, and I think they will. We'll see how the, that uh, plays out. Now, uh, on a larger scale, sequestration cuts are coming. $85 billion in cuts. And if you listen very closely, you can hear the sky actually falling. is going to land on Monday or Friday when these cuts hit. Well, uh, the, the sky will fall because the... Uh, the people paid by the federal government to keep it up are going to go on furlough. <laughs> uh, so uh, what are your thoughts as the Republican Party and the Democratic Party argue that the cuts are going to kill jobs, save the country, we shouldn't do it, we're all for cuts, but not this many cuts, don't cut the military, but cut everything else? What are your thoughts as you watch all this? My thoughts are I'm looking forward to sequestration. Um, I so you and Howard Dean are on the same side. Howard Dean and I, great. Good, okay. good for Governor Dean. All right. Um, no, I think this is going to be, I think it's going to be excellent. Dave Nicholas had a good column the other day. I don't agree with his final point, but I mean, he's a great business columnist for the Post. And he was talking in it about how we need to cut, but this is the wrong way to go about it, the sort of blunt instrument. They're just cutting everything right and left. And- He's right to an extent. It would be great if we could not c- cut out completely the the ineffectual programs and keep the good ones. Right. But that never happens. That's right. where that's where his argument breaks down. And other opponents of sequestration who want to see the government cut, but just say, "Oh, this is the wrong way to go about it." It doesn't happen every time for every program that I think is indefensible and that. Many other people probably do as well. There's somebody in Washington, D.C. that will go to the mattresses to right. defend it. Right. There's somebody out there supporting it. So it would be great if we could just have you know a few people sit down and say, well, we can all agree that we'll cut this 20% and keep like this Like the 80. Ellisville alderman could, could sit down in a room and decide what to cut. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's that, it's that impractical at, at some level. Right. Sure. It's, and what's particularly infuriating is... Then the government comes out and in, in preparation for it is so clearly trying to scare people. Right. Like this, 800,000 people will be furloughed in the Defense Department. Well, they don't have to threaten to furlough 800,000 people. They could deal with this differently and say, we're going to find 10,000, 20,000 middle managers and lay, lay them off. We can make these cuts without trying to tell everybody that the sky is falling. And I'm. What's interesting I, is, is the Republican Party. It seems like the Republican Party is against this, but is actually in favor of it at the same time, which is a very difficult dance to play. Would would you agree? Or I mean, because it seems like they they want to say this is bad, but they're they're getting exactly what they wanted and and what they've ran on for the last twenty years, which is government spending is is going to be cut across the board, thirteen percent. Right, and I think what Republicans are trying to avoid is is taking a media and public public backlash if that comes. I don't think there's going to be a public backlash. I I think if it happens, it'll be excellent, and most people won't notice right. w- how this affects their daily lives. The government will try and scare us to think that we will. We'll will try and scare us and think that children will starve and and the elderly will be kicked out of their homes all because federal grant money will be reduced by two percent. Right. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. The way they're trying to scare as as if going back to 2006, 2007 spending levels, that modern America can't possibly handle that. It might be there might be economic repercussions right now, but there's also repercussions to our freedom to just have government grow and grow and grow and never be cut back. Let me ask you this question in Greece. And in Europe, Portugal, Ireland, they call it austerity, where they raise taxes and they cut government spending, and Europe is in still mired in a ma- major recession. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're raising taxes, and we're cutting government spending. So if it's not working in Europe, why do we want to do it here? Well, I don't think it is failing in Europe. And what I mean by that is, first of all, their austerity is a much higher percentage than it's happening here with sequestration. I mean, these are much larger numbers and percentages of tax increases and cuts. Second of all, it might be harming their economic growth right now, 
But I think at the same time, it's helping their long-term future as they make the changes to government spending necessary for their societies. To say they shouldn't be doing austerity is to say they should continue to spend and spend and spend and grow their welfare states and grow the, the government sector of the economy without ever, without ever changing it. You, some people might say, well, wait till the economy turns around and then you can do it. And that's great in theory, but that doesn't happen in practice either. When the economy is going around, people will say, well, we have the money. Let's continue to, to spend it on larger social programs. You, if you're conservative, if you believe you don't even have to be conservative to think that you shouldn't spend more money than you have. Right. That's a, a famous line from the New York Liberal Party. There's nothing liberal or conservative about spending more money than you take in. <laughs> if you believe that you... We should have our government is too large, as I do. Then you should be looking forward to these sequestration cuts, as I am. All right. Some of the things they say will happen uh, is that Missouri airports will close. Air traffic uh, operators will close. Jefferson City, Columbia, Branson, Joplin, St. Joseph in Illinois airports serving Carbondale. Murfreesboro, Marion, Springfield, and Bloomington will all see their air traffic operations shut down. Well, these are the type of baseless threats that they're designed to scare people. You know, you're talking a 2% cut in expenditures. Perhaps that's across the board. So it's going to be larger in certain departments. But the idea that airports are just going to close because you have this small cut in government spending is a scare tactic. And I don't think people should buy it. I mean, the government should be capable of adjusting some schedules, cutting overtime, firing a few middle management paper pushers to deal with this type of cut and still provide services. And if they can't, if they can't deal with a 2% c- overall cut without catastrophe, then that to me is an argument for doing even more of it, not less. Ladies and gentlemen, we now sit in the world where David Stokes, the Show Me Institute policy analyst, and Howard Dean, the man who used to run the Democratic Party, are on the same side of this issue. Well, I'm, I'm glad for Governor Dean that he's finally right for once. Don't tell Rex, or oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, David Stokes, where can we read you? When can we see you? You can see everything we write at Show Me Institute at our website, showmeinstitute.org. Our blog is showmedaily.org, and you can follow me on Twitter at David C. Stokes. Have a good week. Thanks, McGraw. 8.50, we'll check uh, traffic and weather and talk a little Mizzou hoops with Mike Kelly next on KTRA.